Now let's invite Mr. Zhang Shanzhen, Minister with our Portfolio, Executive Yuan, to lead us through the driving force of post-PC era, cloud computing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Zhang. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was given the title, The Driving Force of Post-PC Era. Oh, this is embarrassing. The typo on the first page. Uh, cloud computing. Uh, if you ask anybody on the street, what's coming up after PC? Well, most people would tell you, well, of course, cell phone, right? Uh, some of them may say, well, iPod, and some of them then would say, well, probably a tablet PC. But uh, what's behind all these uh, devices? What's driving all the uh, operation services behind all these devices? I would say cloud computing. Uh, okay, here. So what is cloud computing? When you ask someone a question and he, 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 he's totally uh, confused, he would say, oh, I'm in the cloud. I guess this is more or less what cloud computing giving an image right now. Uh, What's cloud computing? And a lot of people will say, well, I don't know. I mean the cloud. Uh, uh, if you are a little bit aware of the background of internet, when internet is uh, sketched on a diagram, usually people doesn't know what's going on on all the circuits, network connectivity, and they would draw a cloud just like on the, uh, on the slides. So, so the cloud is basically a representation of massively connected circuits forming the internet. But recently, many, many countries, and also in Taiwan, many, many projects related to cloud are coming up. So it's, uh, I'm kind of concerned. It's becoming a hype. Uh, when, when, when we will look at uh, the, the a company promoting its stock price, they will say, well, I'm related to the cloud. I'm part of the, part of the cloud. And it's a scheme for promoting the stock price. Uh, if you look at some project, especially some project from the government, they would say, well, uh, th uh, this application I'm promoting is uh, really a cloud application. So you should give me more resource. You should give me more, 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 more budget, and so on. So I, in some sense, I think the cloud, uh, the term of cloud computing has been misused and, and becoming a hype. And uh, we, if we don't really come up with some good uh, solution or good uh, application, uh, it's going to be a hype and it's going to be a bubble in some years. Uh, so let me try to define who, in my mind what constitutes a cloud. A cloud is a uh, collectively re shared resource. For example, if you use Facebook, if you use, uh, say, Google search, uh, it's not exactly a centrally located resource because, uh, as most of you know, Google or Facebook has a lot of uh, data center ac across uh, around the globe. And so when you use the search, you don't know where the search service is coming from. It may come from a data center in Asia. It may come from a data center in the States. So, so you, you, you don't know where physically the service is coming from. But uh, basically, conceptual-wise, it's a, a shared resource, right? So, so let me try to use this uh, concept to to further discuss what's uh, cloud computing. If you look at the history of the computing schemes, many, many years ago we have mainframes where everything is centralized, the application, the, the data is centralized. And then thanks to the semiconductor technology, we have mini computers, we have super mini computers, and then application and data become a little bit distributed. And then again, a semiconductor allows the development of PCs, to be more popular. Uh, we, we see the evolution of servers, PC servers, to replace minis. And we also saw the uh, internet to become uh, ubiquitous. So based on servers, PCs, and internet, we see collectively cloud computing is uh, emerging. And so in some sense, cloud computing is a distributed environment. But in another sense, we see in terms of uh, management, we see the logically used uh, application of the cloud is essentially a centralized uh, uh, scheme of computing. Now, uh, the, com the cloud computing is definitely uh, still emerging. It's, not far, it's still far from mature. 
So uh, in terms of business model, we see uh, it, the, the business model is still, still, still changing. For example, who is providing the service? Well, uh, a lot of local telcos, ISPs, they're trying to uh, play some role. So if, if you look at uh, uh, many of the telcos in Taiwan, they're trying to provide uh, unified email services. But on the other hand, you see, uh, well, say, Facebook, Google, they're also trying to provide server email services too. So who will be eventually your service provider for email, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a competition. And if you, if you look at the terms and conditions, they're not settled yet. It's uh, still emerging. If you look at the service level, how do you ensure the service level from, say, one comp telecom company to another service provider like, uh, like Google, right? So everything related to business model is still changing. This is on the supplier side. On the uh, user side, you see, well, uh, people are skeptical about moving their application to the cloud because they lose the sense of control. And if you look at the budgeting process, the budgeting process is even more difficult because uh, usually before, before cloud computing emerges, uh, you simply allocate a fixed sum of money and then that's your annual budget. But then uh, cloud computing say, well, pay as you go, right? And then uh, how, how, what happens if you use uh, a lot more than you, uh, you, you expect and you, you run a budget, right? So uh, uh, we, we see that happening in many, many uh, similar cases. For example, if you buy a cell phone for your son and your son doesn't know how to control uh, his uh, use of the cell phone and then at the end of the month, the, when the bill comes, uh, the parents you, you will usually get a big surprise. Wow, you use, uh, what, 100 US dollars for that month? And so, so, so this is the problem for, for this kind of model. Pay as you go. So you don't know how much money you're going to pay at the end of the month. And then, of course, on the cloud, uh, the technical tools and solutions are not mature. For example, if you look at a single server, a single mainframe, whatever, the uh, database, for example, DB2 from IBM, Oracle from uh, Oracle, uh, they're a very, very uh, mature solution. But if you look at this cloud environment where a lot of servers are serving your purpose and then basically it's a distributed environment, uh, this kind of distributed database, transaction database, is not very mature yet. So if you are looking at uh, a very large transactional application, uh, you are still bound by the database solution. You, you, you cannot really move to the cloud that easily. And then security is another issue. Of course, internationally, there's already some uh, guidelines for security, but uh, they are not fully implemented. And then also for the cloud application, we're assuming, well, there's uh, almost unlimited bandwidth you can use, right? So, uh, but actually, when you really try to uh, download or try to view a lot of uh, video type of, of, uh, of content, uh, we really haven't really tested the, the bandwidth, how the bandwidth would, able, would be able to support this kind of applications. And, uh, uh, also, most of the providers, solution providers will tell you, well, if you move to the cloud, you can save a lot of money. But then when you face the financial officer, the financial officer would ask you a more precise question. So, how much uh, money would you be able to save, right? Uh, what's the model of saving? If you move your application to the cloud, uh, you basically save on the server side. You may save something on the application side, but you need to put more, exp to put more resource to, uh, to expand your bandwidth, right? And so, so this uh, financial modeling is still not very clear. Uh, we, in a general direction, we know well, we can have some saving, but exactly how much you can save, no one can tell for sure. And then last but not least, uh, in, in addition to financial saving, we hope to uh, do some uh, our, our part for, for green uh, energy, right? But uh, it's not a very straightforward matter to really design a green data center. If you are a little bit familiar with the data center profession, there are several tiers, four tiers, tier one to tier four. And actually, uh, it's very, very difficult to achieve a data center of tier four level. And it takes a lot of money to, to build a data center, and it takes a lot of experience. And those uh, technology, those exper expertise are really not in place. So while we are really uh, active in moving all our in-house uh, servers into, say, the telco uh, data center, uh, 
uh, actually that the energy efficiency of those telco companies, uh, the data centers, may not be as uh, ideal, may not be as efficient as you, as you think. So that's another uh, hidden risk there. Despite all those challenges, why are people moving to the cloud? Well, we also have some problems in the PC era. Well, let me just focus on the negative side, on the bottom three negative side. For example, the PC manufacturers are seeing their margin being eroded away quickly because uh, it's becoming a commodity. And the PC environment gets so complicated and there are so many, many uh, security breach, security issues that really the management of a PC environment is uh, beyond the reach of only the people. For example, take myself for example. I, uh, I am the MIS director at my home. Whenever my wife, my son has some uh, uh, P PC problems, they come to me. I have to fix the virus problem for them. I have to clean up their disk. Uh, if their system gets slow, I have to really check if the system is too old. Is it time for me to get, for them to get a new PC? Or is it because they just have too much junk in the PC? So I have to clean up their PC and try to make their PC run as efficient as before. So this is uh, my job at home, I'm not the parent, I'm, not the, I'm, I'm only an MIS uh, engineer at my home. But not every home can have somebody like me who has the free time to do this kind of fixing on PC. So, so you see, uh, you know, this PC is getting very, very, very uh, difficult to manage. And then if you look at the enterprise side, look at the business side, they have a lot of PC servers, but if you look at the utilization, uh, you would say, well, on the average, they are using the PC, the servers, about 20 to 30 percent uh, loading. And so a lot of the resource of the PC servers are actually wasted. So we also face all these problems. So compared with the challenges of the cloud computing in the future and the problems we have on hand for the PC era, well, many people figure out, well, maybe we better move to the cloud, although the cloud is uh, it's still emerging, but at least we don't have to worry about the management at home uh, or the, the enterprise. We don't have to worry too much about the security because supposedly, supposedly, the telco should take care of all the security issues, right? Now, this uh, uh, service layers of cloud computing are, should be pretty much familiar with all your, your, your audience, so I'll skip that. Let, let, me, let me say something about how my, personally, I look at the cloud. If you look at the bottom layer, uh, the three layers, the infrastructure layer, the platform layer, and the application layer, basically they are all technology. And uh, I, I see them as a bottom-up approach. If you look at a cloud project, uh, what they uh, contribute to the uh, technology, if you look at a, 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 a project uh, related to, say, uh, developing a new PC server, developing, say, uh, a container uh, data center. Basically, you expect that uh, project to really help you in delivering cost-effective equipment, the energy-saving hardware and software. So, uh, on the right side, I put down the challenge. What's the challenge in really delivering a good solution in the infrastructure layer? Well you have to have the good technology. But even more importantly, even if you can come up with the good technology to, to uh, design a good PC server, do you have the marketing uh, capability to really sell that particular product worldwide, right? Uh, in Taiwan, in particular, we have very good base in hardware, so I don't have I, I don't have too much doubt if Taiwan can do well in promoting Taiwan's uh, uh, PC server, but Taiwan is also trying to develop some software, basic software. In that case, uh, my first question would be, well, would you be able to compete with the world-class uh, solutions from, say, Microsoft, from, uh, from, say, VMware, or whatever, right? Can you really come up with solutions that's competitive enough? And do you have the marketing channel to really sell them worldwide? So that's a big challenge. Uh, if you look, look uh, as an engineer, he would say, well, I have all the expertise I need to develop some certain type of software, but usually they will overlook the marketing side. And sometimes, uh, you know, it takes a very good, well, most of the time it takes good marketing uh, strategy to really promote your product. So, so this is the, the challenge I saw, I, I see in the infrastructure uh, layer. 
uh, in terms of the platform layer, what's the challenge here? Well, uh, you have to be able to hand, handle massive data. You have to handle your massive data in a distributed environment. And so for this particular layer, I see the excellence of technology is a key. And then we go up further to the application layer and we see, well, what's, what's a good application uh, that really can demonstrate the value of the cloud? It has to be large scale, right? It has to be physically shared, but logically integrated and centrally managed. So in order to come up with really good cloud applications, first of all, you have to have creativity. And then because of this application is really large scale, if you take an application from the government, for example, that particular application will most likely be across many, many ministries and you need coordination. So uh, on the application layer, uh, technology is not really the key. The key is the creativity to really come up with good uh, application scenario and also the coordination uh, uh, power to really work out that uh, process. But this is uh, all this uh, application uh, layer uh, middleware, uh, platform layer, and infrastructure layer are really transparent to the end users. So what does the end user see? The end user sees what well, are the values for, for me. For example, I'm a, I'm a citizen. Uh, you have all the servers selling worldwide. That's good. But what's the benefit for me? Uh, I don't use the servers at all. So what's the benefit for me? So when we are promoting the cloud, we are see, we're assessing the value of a cloud, we need to look at two things. We need to look at the value for an individual citizen. We also need to look at, review the uh, industrial value, for example, the, re the revenue that could be generated for that particular industry, right? So that's a top-down value. So, so bottom-up and top-down, uh, we need to balance all these factors in order to really assess a good cloud application. Now let me touch upon uh, how a cloud computing can drive the technology. On the hardware side, I mentioned you have to be cost effective. You need not be cheap, but you have to be cost effective. And it has to be energy saving. And most importantly, because the cloud computing are really uh, delivered by many, many major enterprises like Google, Facebook, and other telcos, for example. For example, Google or Facebook, they have their customized spec for servers. So while Taiwan can make very good commercial servers, you also need to be able to adaptive to different specs from major players like Google or Facebook. On the software side, the major challenge are scalability. Uh, now you, you have, a, for example, let me take a stock trading system. A stock trading system for a stock trader may serve, say, 10,000 online users at one time. But if you look at a stock trading system on the cloud, then it has to be trade, it has to be able to serve all the traders that's online in, say, Taiwan at the same time. Or even if we are looking at a market, say, in China, then how many online traders could present on the internet at the same time? It could be hundreds and thousands. So your software has to be able to scale up to that level from a small system used by an individual stock trader to a, you know, uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of users on the internet at the same time. So obviously this scalability cannot be met by one single server, even though that server may be very, very powerful. You need to be able to deliver this function across a distributed environment. And distributed processing was really a, a skill owned by the technical uh, profession by grid and uh, parallel computing in the high performance computing industry. And then suddenly we see all the, this uh, expert, expertise has to move into a commercial arena, which uh, we, we, we already see that uh, uh, the talents for this kind of uh, coding, uh, uh, program design, program coding is uh, in a big demand and not enough uh, talents out there. And then, of course, security is a major issue for software design, which most of the software or system integrator lacks. Another area where cloud computing is really driving is business innovation. I mentioned earlier, hardware and software providers, who are you selling your product to? Earlier, you sell your product to individual enterprise. Now you, sell, you, you will be selling your, your solution to, to service providers like 
telcos, like ISPs. So we see the ecosystem of this uh, business is really reforming because uh, telco and ISPs, they, they dominate the customer access. And so they will buy the servers in hundreds, and maybe in thousands. For example, one very question people would uh, get curious about Google. How many servers does Google has worldwide? It has to be hundreds and thousands, right? So when Google buys servers, it buys, Google, buys servers by the hundreds, thousands, or even hundreds of thousands, as I said. So obviously, Google would have tremendous bargaining power toward the server manufacturer. So basically, you are not selling your software or hardware solution to one single enterprise. You're selling it to very, very big telcos, very, very big service providers that has tremendous power of bargaining. Uh, then the uh, service provider itself, like Google and Facebook, also competes with major telco and ISPs. I mentioned email earlier, right? I guess uh, most of people in this room, uh, if I do a, a survey, I guess most of you would have a personal email, say in Gmail or in Hotmail, right? So, so. Uh, uh, a lot less people may be using the email service from local telcos. So this is a very major trend of the competition. And then we also see Dropbox, for example. Dropbox uh, emerged as a really niche player. It just serves you as a uh, file storage on the cloud. So uh, maybe one day Dropbox will become very, very big and get on the market and uh, hopefully uh, not repeat the Facebook uh, IPO process. Uh, maybe it would not get IPO, maybe it would get buy, uh, buy out by Google or Facebook, who knows. But basically, this is a very, very uh, niche uh, player that also is attracting a lot of attention. So, uh, really, uh, from the government perspective, what are we trying to uh, uh, do in terms of uh, promoting cloud computing? Well, on the top, as I said, we, you need to provide value. You need to create value for those uh, individuals. And so the top priority would be promote valuable applications. And then uh, in order to deliver all these applications, you go to the left, you have to be able to build the expertise to build these uh, applications. And the applications has to be uh, lay on top of a layer of system software. So on the right, we see we also need to go down one further layer to the infrastructure layer and be able to deliver system software expertise. And then on the bottom, we hope we can leverage as much as possible homemade infrastructure, like right? data center or even servers. And out of all this uh, criteria, we try to be green at the time. So going back to the top uh, left, we try to balance the, the values for C, which is consumer. We try to create value for B, the business. So this is a very balanced uh, view of cloud computing in, in, in promoting the industry in Taiwan. Now let me give you a couple of examples of cloud computing we're trying to push. And by these two examples, give you some sense of how this project drives the technology. For example, we're, we're, we're trying to allow, we're trying to empower the Taiwan police with more mobility by ICT uh, technology. If you look at, the, look at the pictures on the top, top left, uh, you see a couple of uh, policemen are holding some uh, handheld device and taking pictures of some suspect, right? And uh, and once you take the picture of the suspect, how do you know the suspect is really some, somebody who is wanted or he is innocent, right? So you need to have a database uh, consisting of, of all the pictures of criminals. For example, uh, we, we take the, uh, the picture of a movie star. I'm sorry I forgot his name, but obviously I guess you can recognize it's a movie, what, a Spartan? A Spartan, something like that movie, right? So, so it's the actor himself and it's the actor in the movie. So you have to really do the uh, facial recognition uh, between two, these two pictures and uh, tell that, uh, well, basically they're the same guy. And so, so uh, we have the handheld device for the policeman, and uh, he took a picture of a suspect, and then we, we, we must be able to identify the picture and where the picture is located. Let me, let me go to the next page. So uh, uh, we need to build a cloud database uh, that 
stores all the pictures of all those uh, criminals, or the wanted criminals. And then we also need to be able to uh, send the picture taken by the handheld device to the database for matching. And that takes the wireless broadband capability. And so this, uh, driving, this is driving the technology for both the backend database, the technology for facial recognition, and also the wireless broadband uh, business, and also the handheld device. So one application can drive many, many uh, technology at the same time. In the, in the meantime, we anticipate this application to be able to improve the law enforcement. We anticipate to incubate the broadband business, as I mentioned. And then uh, before we go to 4G, we really like that we have the application in place first. And then when the 4G is uh, uh, available in Taiwan, we would like that to be uh, uh, deployed uh, at the uh, 4G platform right away. So this is one small example of uh, cloud computing we're trying to, to, to develop. Another application is what we call GIS Cloud, Geographic Information System, which uh, basically we, we really would like to have a, uh, something like a Google Map, but customized for Taiwan. The reason for not going into the existing Google Map services because in Taiwan government, we also take satellite or aerial pictures with a much higher accuracy and a much uh, frequent update. And uh, so if you look at the accuracy of the map and also the updateness of the map, obviously the resource within the government should be at least better, at least uh, as good or even better than the Google map. So uh, we integrate all the GIS uh, resource, uh, the base map, and then we separate the base map from the add-on information. Well, What's the add-on of information? For example, meteorology. Uh, a couple of days ago, we have heavy rainfall on the East Coast. We have the Weather Bureau to, to imp superimpose the rainfall information over the base map. And then uh, we also have some uh, river management authority which can really uh, measure the flow in the river, the water flow in the river, and try to predict the flooding potential or, we, or landslide potential. And uh, if you look at all this uh, uh, information, basically we, you can imagine, well, there's a synergy. Uh, if you can combine the rainfall information and allow, allow the rainfall information to be used by the landslide information, and then the landslide information can also be combined. And again, uh, on the East Coast, there's a very beautiful highway called Suhua Konglu. If you are from abroad, I, I suggest that that's a very scenic route you can take, but that's also a very risky route because uh, during rain, heavy rainfall, that uh, that highway can sometimes get landslide, sometimes get, get blocked. So the highway authority, they basically use the rainfall information, the landslide information, and, and determine if at uh, certain times in the heavy rainfall, they should block the highway for, for use because there are very high potential for, 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 for landslide along the highway. So by combining the base map from the base, uh, from the map authority, by combining the information from the meteorology uh, uh, authority and also the uh, landslide analysis uh, authority, the highway uh, administration are able to do this uh, highway management during a, high, during a storm. So all this application is uh, another uh, example of driving the coordination and also the integration of the information across the ministries. In order to achieve all this uh, application scenario, uh, you need to have good application. And uh, this, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to convert all this uh, display of Chinese characters in, into English. But basically, this uh, diagram shows that on the bottom, we have all the solutions from IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, VMware, and also from some of the uh, research institutes in Taiwan. They come up with all these uh, infrastructure solutions or platform solutions, and then we, uh, we try to put all these uh, solutions into what we call open platform, open lab, which allows uh, all the application developers to try out different uh, solutions. For example, he may decide to go to Oracle solution uh, initially, and then he may find that, well, maybe he could try another solution from a local research institution. So basically, this uh, application, this uh, application can try out different uh, solutions 
uh, from different providers and then determine the best solution for his application and then devel develop his application with the best uh, technology he, he has in mind. So in order to really go to the brochure and then uh, commercial brochure and determine what solution or what tools you use, you really go to this platform and really try out different solutions. Because uh, I guess most of you may, may know, uh, sometimes commercial brochures uh, claim more than you can really do, right? So, so you really have to you really need to have a platform to really try out these different solutions. So, uh, we, as from the government's pr perspective, we're trying to promote different solutions, but we're trying to promote them fairly. We try to promote them that uh, everybody can sh can leverage their can use can try out its true capability and not the capabilities the supplier claims on the on the brochure on the DM. So we're halfway in building this platform. Basically, this is a virtual platform. We are trying, not trying to duplicate all the platform, all the solutions uh, the suppliers are already providing. We're trying to uh, 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 build up this virtual platform that has a central hub, central portal that directs the application developer into different solution providers. So. Uh, on the top, you see different applications. I mentioned uh, disaster uh, GIS. So one of the applications is uh, disaster mitigation. One of the applications is police administration. So uh, in, all, in the process of dev developing all these cloud applications, one cr criteria for this cloud uh, owner, the government agency, is that uh, we, when we allocate the budget to these different cloud projects, we really require them to try out the the solutions from Taiwan local providers as much as possible. But on the other hand, we also understand that Taiwan solutions may not be uh, functionally complete. So in some cases, Taiwan solutions may be workable, but in some other cases, we still uh, need to leverage a lot on the international products. So this is, as I said, a neutral platform that allows uh, all the applications to try out. But in terms of government budget, in in uh, supporting all these applications. Uh, one main thing is try the local applications as much, uh, try the local uh, solutions as much first, and then uh, also evaluate fairly the international solutions as well. So this is uh, something we're also building in parallel uh, to the application we're trying to uh, design. So I guess the time is pretty much uh, uh, up. So let me try to summarize what I just uh, mentioned in terms of uh, cloud computing in driving the post-PC era. Uh, basically, this is a new arena for I ICT ecosystem. Uh, aside from all the technology issues, I see this uh, ecosystem or the business model is the most important evolution for the ICT also or the post-PC uh, era. Uh, in the PC era, it's very clear. The solution providers sell the product to the end user, either consumer or the enterprise. In the future, the ecosystem will be changed dramatically. And then the service provider would have a much heavier role than before because uh, they are really uh, the intermediate layer from the provider and the end user. And uh, there are many, many types of service provider, as I mentioned, telco. Google like, uh, or Facebook, uh, this kind of uh, content provider, are they collaborating or are they competing? It's a very interesting question. I guess in the end, some, in some sense, they are competing, but in some other sense, they are collaborating. So it's a very uh, uh, mind-boggling uh, scenario in the future. And then another uh, issue is uh, we are not seeing all the possible business model uh, yet. Uh, for example, I, I mentioned Dropbox. Uh, in, what in the long run is the business model for Dropbox, right? Are, you, are they just uh, selling the storage on the cloud? Well, if they do, uh, then I see they are competing heavily against, let's say, Google, right? And then, uh, so, so they must have some, in their minds, they must have some, some, some really uh, fresh idea, which I don't know, about their business model. And so, so when we come up with new technology and try to deliver new services, we really need to think about seriously about business model. Are you competing with giants like Facebook, like Google? Do you have room in this uh, internet market for your new business? It's a very serious question, right? 
uh, as I mentioned before, good technology doesn't really imply good business. And then uh, technology expertise are becoming more demanding because, as I mentioned, scale, security, that two criteria is really, really demanding because uh, we are not looking at a small market like Taiwan. Uh, we are looking at a regional market, uh, maybe China, maybe regional market. So, so we are really designing a software that scalability is a challenge. Uh, if we have a good business, then there are more room for profit margin. But then again, economy of scale. If you have only a small business, uh, it might not be profitable or, or lucrative enough. But at the end, I would try to really uh, emphasize that uh, in coming up with all the new applications, we really need to have creativities. Uh, I think one of the applications I mentioned earlier, the police uh, application, the law enforcement application, there are some creativity there. But creativity brings coordination. Creativity brings uh, technology challenge. And so uh, when we are moving into the era of cloud computing, uh, we are seeing cloud computing supporting iPad, uh, iPhone, cell phone, whatever. Uh, the technology seen behind the end device is really the challenging part. And it really takes uh, a platform like today, the exchange platform like today, to really bring talents together to make this cloud computing vision become a real, uh, real, real thing for everybody in, in this uh, market. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Zhang, for your speech. Thank you again.